me we have Sally Holland. Hello, I'm Sally Holland. I'm the Children's Commissioner for Wales and it's my job to protect and promote children's human rights under the United Nations Convention for the Rights of the Child here in Wales. Um, I'm delighted to have the chance to share with you today some of our experiences in passing and implementing a law change to give children equal protection under the law from physical punishment. So hopefully you've just seen a, a short video, which is just part of a wider education campaign, which has been led by our government, but informed by a range of partners, including the police and social services, the voluntary sector and my own office to make sure that both parents, carers and uh, people implementing the new law, like nursery workers, police and social services, all understand what the new law means and get advice and support on better, more effective ways to support our children as they grow up. Um, it's been very important to us that we have um, an education campaign alongside the new law and that's why um, we had, we've had two years between the law being passed and it actually coming into effect. And that's because evidence shows internationally that the most effective way of reducing the um, incidence rates of physical punishment on children is to have both an edu public education campaign and a law change. Often people will say, well, it's better just to educate parents, but actually the evidence shows we should have a law change as well. So this is where we're at now in Wales. I'm very pleased to have seen it, but how did we get there? Well, it's been quite a struggle. It's been a, a, a long struggle, I, I, I'm sorry to say, um, but um, I thought I'd share with you a few uh, notes on, on what we did here in Wales. So first of all, um, through a, a, a selection of small grants, uh, a third sector group was formed um, called Children Are Unbeatable. It had just one member of staff for most of its existence, but um, that the Children Are Unbeatable campaign uh, brought together the key messages from the third sector um, and from opposing uh, opposition politicians and some um, backbenchers who really wanted this law change and people like myself, the Children's Commissioner. Uh, before I was Children's Commissioner, I was an academic. I was um, a social work uh, professor at Cardiff University and I formed a group called uh, Academics for Equal Protection because I was very keen that alongside the important children's human rights arguments, we also got across um, the message that research evidence strongly shows the need for this legal change and that smacking um, has um, negative impacts on children, particularly in their long term outcomes. So I got senior academics from across lots of different academic fields from psychology to family law to criminology to education to social work to sign up to that so to say publicly that they thought that the evidence showed that this law change was absolutely necessary so we were able to put up um, experts for media interviews and to give evidence to committees in the parliament etc I then became the Children's Commissioner in 2015 and stated clearly on my very first day that this was a legal change that was necessary in Wales uh, to make sure that we met our obligations under the United Nations Convention for the Rights of the Child. And I kept that message up very strongly in, in many public statements, in my statutory annual reports, etc., but also behind the scenes. So as Children's Commissioner, I've got good access to ministers of the government, for example, and in every meeting um, with a minister in my first year, whatever the subject, I made sure that I raised this topic. I was able to weigh up some of the arguments some of them made to say that they didn't feel Wales was ready for this yet, go away and research it and go back to them and say, well, you were worried about um, levels of prosecution of parents. This is what the, um, the chief prosecutor for Wales says would happen if this law changed and it wasn't too alarming at all. Similarly, this is what the chief of police says would be the implications for them and how they would welcome this clarification of the law. So um, I was able to sort of do quite a lot of behind the scenes work as well um, as, as Children's Commissioner, as well as public statements. 
The government also collected data um, on um, they, they were doing this anyway and they continue to do this after they changed their mind on um, on this law change to see what levels of support there was in the general public for physical punishment and the incidence rates of that and we were able to show that actually incidence and use of physical punishment particularly amongst parents of younger children um, was uh, declining quite rapidly in Wales. So we were able to say the law is not keeping up with public opinion and public actions as well. But most importantly, we got it into the manifestos of the main political, two of the main political parties who were um, vying for election in the 2016 election. And one of those, the Labour government, um, was able to uh, form the government again in 2016. And this time it was in their manifesto. So we were pretty sure that we then had the numbers to get it through over the next five years, which is which is what happened. Um, and this was quite a significant shift for our government, but by that point, they clearly felt much more comfortable with the law change. And what was really important to me was that when they announced the legal change, that their intention to do this, they did it by saying, this is all about children's rights and this is about our commitment under the United Nations for the Convention of the Rights of the Child. And I, I was so pleased to see that argument at the very top of their reasons for passing um, this law. Now, uh, we knew we had by this point the majority in Parliament, but over the next five years, we wanted to win the public hearts and minds too. So we developed some top lines to persuade people. So first of all, we talked about children's rights. Children have the right to be safe and this breaches their rights under the United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child. The UN has already said that our nation must change it. So it's time we met those obligations. Secondly, we talked about equality. We said over and over again, how can it be the case that there's no circumstances in which it's acceptable to physically hurt another member of our family who's an adult as a punishment, but it's okay to do it with children who are usually smaller and weaker than adults. Um, how, how, how can it be fair? We must give children equal protection. Generally, we give children more protection under the law, not less. So why don't we do it in this circumstance? Thirdly, we said it's so important that as our children grow up, they learn about healthy relationships, resolving conflicts and having debates with people without resorting to physical violence. That's a lesson for life. We're a nation that's committed to ending domestic abuse. Um, those lessons must start from birth. So let's give really strong role models about how best to relate to other people. The fourth one was an argument that many adults gave. Well, children cannot understand. Uh, little children cannot understand um, your debates and arguments. They, a, a little smack does them no harm and it teaches them a lesson if they run on the road or put their hand on the fire. And we said, well, it's a normal part of parenting to keep your child safe. And of course, you can physically um, stop them from doing those things and explain to them why, even if it's just where they're tiny with a little no, that's not safe, it's ow. But um, we don't need to go on and hurt them through doing that. Um, we don't make that argument with others who cannot understand arguments, perhaps an older person with dementia who might wander onto the road or someone with severe learning disabilities. In fact, there'd be an outcry if we physically hurt someone in those circumstances to teach them a lesson. So why is it acceptable with small children? We also talked about research and the outcomes, um, which I've already mentioned, but it is so important that people do know the research because people say it worked for me it could, it, and it works for my children. So it's important that they see the public health outcomes. And we talked about changing the seatbelt law, changing the law on smoking and how it's important for the health of the whole population, even if you could find someone who had smoked for 80 years and had um, never developed lung cancer. And finally, we said other nations have done this and actually the sky hasn't fallen down. We haven't rounded up. They haven't rounded up lots of parents into prison. In fact, it's just led to an acceleration of the change in this unacceptable behaviour. And I think that was important too, to say, actually, we're the ones out on a limb now and all these nations have done it. Why haven't we done it yet?
So I just want to finish by wishing you the very, very best in Australia to say that the international community where we've already passed these laws is behind you. And if we can help and support you in any way, please do get in touch. Bye for now and thank you for listening.